So, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the lunch and the conference, of course. <laughs> uh, it's always challenging to have uh, first, the first session after the lunch, but uh, hopefully we'll uh, try to make you alive again. Um, so, my name is Paweł Potasiński. I'm a senior program manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team, and together with me online, I have Guy, Regin Guy Reginiano from the ADX team, the Azure Data Explorer team. Guy, say hello. Thanks. You're quite visible. Hey, everyone. We see Great you on the screen. Uh, cool. Yeah. So hey, um, we're here to deliver you a session on Azure Data Explorer, a torch in the dungeon of observation and analytics. So hey, we'll try to uh, explain what the observational analytics is, um, what scenarios it may it may cover, and a bit of you know explain why and when you should consider Azure Data Explorer as a service that might be quite useful in your analytical scenarios. If you want to connect with us, uh, feel free to jump in and connect on Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, we'll share more links for you later on. So um, we'll have three parts of this presentation. First, I will do a kind of introduction. Then Guy will present you with some kind of a demo. This wizard on the first slide was not accidental. There will be some magic going on. And uh, the last part will be about summary and some call to action. We, w we want you to go and try uh, Azure Data Explorer on your own, because we think that's worth it. And you may ask uh, why actually those two people are on the same at the same stage, I mean, the ADX team and Synapse team. Well, because those products are connected somehow. Azure Data Explorer, as you might know, its runtime is, is also a part of Azure Synapse. It is offered as a, standalone pro as a standalone service in Azure, and as a part of Azure Synapse, you may choose one of those. We will show you the common parts of Azure Data Explorer today. So let's start with a story. Every great product has some idea or problem to solve behind. So it actually started years ago, I'd say eight or something, um, and uh, it was in Power BI team. Hey, Power BI is behind Azure Data Explorer. The problem to solve was how to effectively track the logs behind Power BI because, hey, people start to use this, use this thing. Anyone has been using Power BI since 2015? Thank you. Ah, great community we have. So, hey, Power BI is quite successful, but uh, we needed to quickly find out solution for how to track the activities of users because people were failing with many things in Power BI. Uh, so that was the need. Actually, as you may expect, people working with reports, data sets, they generate a lot of data by clicking, dragging, dropping, generating things, uh, working on artifacts. So it, it was very useful to generate some solution that would search the log and find specific tenant, specific report, specific user, and narrow the problem to the single line of the log. And that's, that's the born of Azure Data Explorer. Those for people sitting here are the uh, founders, basically. Uh, so hey, actually, uh, you probably may know may know this person. Do you know who it is? Jacques Cousteau. Thank you. So it's not by accident. Um, so Jacques Cousteau is actually known as an ocean explorer, and that's why the ADX team picked uh, Cousteau as the nickname for the product because the product is for exploring the ocean of data. That's a beautiful name. So yeah, Custo, you may find, the, you may find it uh, used in many places. If you find the nickname Custo, just ADX is the same, right? Um, actually, it, it's, even, it's even more connected because some folks from the ADX team, uh, they like uh, diving. So they also explore the real ocean, not just the ocean of data. There's no better, there's no better thing than working on the product that you develop for your own purposes. It's typical that we start at Microsoft with finding solutions for our own problems, and that was the case of Azure Data Explorer. Since it actually went in the private internal use in, at Microsoft in 2015, it's been used extensively for monitoring and helping, helping to solve problems on different platforms, starting from Power BI, but through Windows, Skype, SQL, in Azure, uh, and, even, and even Xbox. So whenever you have any, any challenges and there are some 
uh, searches for your activities and in the logs, Azure Data Explorer comes into the game, or the, the, the platform behind it comes into the game. Also, we built several software as a service uh, solutions based on the same platform, on Azure Data Explorer paradigms and the, and the platform itself. So if you play with uh, log, log monitor, uh, Azure Monitor, Log Analytics, um, Sentinel, well, you probably are familiar with KQL, which uh, Guy is going to present in a second quite extensively. So, hey, it's not just about a single product. Uh, so learning KQL language may be useful not just for the purpose of pure analytics done with Azure Data Explorer, but also for um, general Azure management or administration. That's, that's another, great, another great information. And uh, last but not least, there are lots of customers um, who successfully use this platform. So it's not the case that we don't have anyone using Data Explorer, even if, if we find it a bit underestimated by the market. It is. I mean, that's why we do this session. That's, that's the purpose. Um, so really, the purpose of the session is to make you familiar with the ADX, to maybe um, do some myth buster, because Typically, when, I, when we say Azure Data Explorer, people respond with, hey, real-time analytics. Well, not really. It's not just for real-time analytics. You can do real-time analytics, but it's many more. And I will, I will just elaborate on that a bit later. So if you want to find uh, some uh, details on uh, how, how customers are, are using this, uh, this thing, just navigate to aka.ms slash adx.customers, and there'll be plenty of good examples for you, not just real-time analytics. Myth number one, basta. Um, now, what it is, actually? You may ask your question. The name is quite, quite good. I mean, it sounds like File Explorer or something. So, hey, it's actually, the, this is the definition, but I want, I, I want to ex quite expand it a bit. Because, you know, big data, we have lots of platforms for big data. Synapse is one, right? So, what is the difference of, between this platform and, and, and other platforms that we have for analytics? So first of all, consider big data for Azure Data Explorer as data that comes in large volumes, high frequency, so lots of events coming uh, is, as a you know, kind of streams, but also data coming in not just structured, but also semi-structured uh, formats, like, like JSON, classical you know, logs or events coming from some APIs. Those, those will be great, great, great examples. Uh, also, free text. That's a, great, that's a great use case for, uh, for KUST. So big data, that's number one. Second, it's a cloud platform. It's a platform as a service uh, solution. So you don't need to take care about spinning up virtual machines. We, have, we do have clusters inside. And we present you with the cluster management features, like you can scale out or it's all scale up those clusters. You can pause, resume. But it's just management of those clusters, not, uh, you know, taking care about the whole infrastructure behind. Uh, it's optimized for doing crazy things. Crazy things with, for example, uh, searching for uh, text patterns. So you will see examples of guy doing some, some, some queries running regular expressions in seconds or subseconds. But it's not just uh, regular expressions, which uh, we still, I believe, me are missing in SQL. Ah, sorry, uh, I had to. Uh, so, hey, another thing is ad hoc queries. So, if you have scenarios when business, uh, business requirements or business questions are changing quite frequently, it's a great tool. Interactive queries, uh, very fast responses, that's another part. You will see that on a, quite a big data in, in, the, in the demos. Now, I'm not going to dive deep in the architecture, but you need to know the baseline. So, I mentioned clusters, so set of let's say, virtual machines connected into some kind of architecture with, uh, I would say, classic cluster approach. So you have data management nodes and you have engine nodes, which are responsible for distributed work of the cluster. But uh, the good thing is that behind those, uh, those engine, engine nodes, are there are sitting SSDs, files, fast disks that are responsible for, you know, part of optimization that we have inside this, this engine. The first thing you do typically is uh, ingestion. The experience for ingestion can be, can be, I would say, broad because it can be super easy from putting your files from the file system or just attaching files from you know, blob storage, whatever, 
uh, ending up with uh, data that comes in real time using different technologies like even hubs or, or open source things like Kafka. Uh, so you can have active data connections or you can have batch connections, whatever, whatever you uh, want, to, want to play with, it's, it's possible, right? Um, the management on, of clusters can be done using different, different methods. It's in Azure portal, but also it, is, it, is, uh, it can be done using, uh, for example, ARM or, or some commands uh, sent to the clusters as well. So uh, you, can, you can actually send the data uh, or expose the data from Data Explorer to different, uh, different things like, like uh, databases or, or even applications. And you can access the data that's, that is uh, stored within, uh, within uh, ADX clusters using different tools from Power BI, which may be a uh, familiar tool or let's say favorite tool for some of you, uh, ending up with just ADX itself and its UI. So yes, ADX com comes with another user experience. It's a Web Explorer UI, but you can also download some uh, actually Windows application, install it, install it as well. And also you can run uh, queries using even SQL, as you, if, you, if you want. So uh, different techniques. You can also use open source connectors and uh, connect, connect uh, through Jupyter Notebooks or, or Apache Spark, free, free choice. Why I'm telling you this? Because that proves this technology can be in the middle of observational analytics that is consumed by pretty much everything. So now, at the heart of the cluster, or your work with uh, ADX clusters, there will be, al there'll be always some KQL. After you ingest the data or after you set up the connections to your data sources, you will be querying your data. That's a crucial thing to uh, well, become familiar with KQL. You have to learn this language. The language itself is quite, I would say, it's not, I, would, I wouldn't say simple, but um, it has some, some advantages. Like, for example, you start by picking the table storm events in this example. Then you have the flow that is pretty much just like, uh, just, just like query flow goes. So it's a bit different than SQL if you compare it from you know, SQL Server experience, but it does the thing with relational or semi-relational relational data quite well. The good thing is that the data that lands in Data Explorer is actually not just distributed. It's also, uh, it's also um, uh, quite well indexed or, let's say, optimized for queries. So we do have columnar storage. That's number one. So you go by columns. It's, it's compressed. Uh, you do have uh, full text in indexing, really, re really solid focus, uh, text indexing. So you can search for patterns in text, and you will see that in a second. Uh, it's great for time, time series queries. So whenever you have a uh, scenario that is based on time, you have to analyze the number of, or the amount of, in, of events coming into you know, specific bins of time, like minutes, hours, or seconds, you're good to go. You want to find anomalies in the time series? That's great. Um, geospatial analytics, we will see that uh, in, the G, in, the, uh, in, the, in the demo in, in a second. Also, you can have uh, some attachment to machine learning operations. And it comes with out-of-the-box visualizations, which, which do not replace Power BI, but can be great whenever you go and just run your ad hoc query and you don't want to just go with tables as an outcome. Um, you will see the, uh, the ease, of, ease of use in terms of syntax. Pretty much everything gets IntelliSense, right? Um, so the question from SQL people typically we have is, can you, can you somehow translate from T-SQL to, uh, to KQL and maybe vice versa? So yes, you, you do. But some limitations, of course, that are there, but uh, there are some cheat sheets that we present to, uh, to you if, you if you're familiar with SQL. Also, there is uh, some magic command that you, may, that you may use for translation, and you will see that in a demo. So with that, I think we are good to... Uh, switch to my friend, uh, uh, to my friend uh, Guy. So hey, the demo will go like, like this. First of all, we'll show you how to start playing for free, which is super important if you want to learn technology and just not pay for that. Cool stuff. The second thing will be how to ingest the data from very simple scenarios. Then, major part will be KQL queries, really from, from really easy one to ending up to the ones that probably will take several screens to, 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 sc to scroll. But we will not teach you this. We want to just show the, the highlight, the advantages and strong points of, the, of KQL and, and ADX. And finally, integration with other tools. I would say 
Um, maybe I will just jump in and show you the connector for Pi BI, but it's, it's, it may be actually optional. So with that, uh, Guy, I would switch to your screen, and let's do the demo. Great. Thanks for the intro. Uh, it was uh, amazing. So now let's see the real stuff. So as you can see, uh, this is my screen. Sorry, I have two monitors, so I will look on, on my bigger one. So uh, this is the Azure portal, OK? We start with the uh, Azure portal because like any other Azure resource, uh, the Azure portal is where you, uh, you create new resources and where you can manage the resource. OK, so let's start with uh, this cluster. Uh, we call it uh, Demo 12. This is my cluster that I created for the demo. From the Azure portal, first you can provision the Azure Data Explorer cluster, okay, which is the, the basic unit. And you can also manage the cluster. You can stop and start the cluster. You can see some properties of the cluster, like the region, uh, the URL of the cluster, the instance count, etc. Okay, you can also uh, go and see some monitoring uh, 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 statistics and, and, uh, uh, and metrics for this cluster. Now, the way to interact with uh, the cluster is using this. Can, can you see this, uh, the side pen? I'm not sure that you can see my full screen, but basically this is the query. At least I don't see it uh, on the screen sharing, but I hope you can see it, that there is a query blade on the uh, left-hand side, and this is where you can actually uh, interact with the data in this cluster, okay? Now, I want to stress that Azure Data Explorer, although its name, it has a name of a, a UI, it's not only the UI, okay? It's the actual engine uh, under the hoods, it's also the databases under the hoods, and it's also the, the web UI, okay? So it's all basically the Azure Data Explorer offering, or Gusto, which as mentioned earlier, uh, was the internal name, and still the query language to interact with Azure Data Explorer called the Gusto query language. Now, as you can see here, uh, there is this open in web UI button. So I'm going to switch to the standalone web UI. It just gives us some more uh, capabilities and easier way to interact and write queries uh, with Azure Data Explorer. So let's switch to the Azure Data Explorer uh, web UI. Basically, this is the web UI, dataexplorer.azure.com. And let's see uh, what we have uh, over here. We have several pages. Okay, first one is the home page. This is where, uh, this is the starting point. You have several interesting things here. First one is this uh, uh, explore sample data with KQL. So if you are completely new uh, to the product, you can start uh, with that. Once you click uh, on this button, you can see that you have several examples of uh, out of the box uh, queries. Let's start with some examples and you will see that you are moved to the uh, query page where you can see some out of the box ready queries with some uh, free uh, uh, data set that you can try and, uh, uh, and learn KQL with. But we'll see later some more interesting KQL queries. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. You can also get some links to uh, free Microsoft Learn modules if you want to learn more about the products, the product, and also links to the uh, product documentation. Let's go uh, to the next page, which is the data management page. So basically uh, in this tab, uh, you can uh, quickly ingest the data to the ADX cluster, okay? One option is ingesting data from a local file, okay? So you have this option. If you want just to test or try something, you can click on that. Uh, you select the cluster. In this case, I'm using the cluster that I showed you earlier. Let's uh, set another table as the destination table. You can browse a local file in this case. Just browse it. Okay, so this is the source data. Go next, and this is basically uh, the suggested uh, inferred uh, table schema uh, that is based on the actual JSON that I just uh, uploaded. Uh, you can, if you want, uh, edit the, the table schema, change stuff, uh, etc. 
So this is a, a this was a quick example of one time ingestion. More interesting is if you want to work with continuous ingestion, so you can create easily with the same uh, web UI ingestion wizard, uh, uh, continuous ingestion from Azure Data Lake, continuous ingestion from Azure Event Hub, ingestion from Blob Container, etc. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we also have connectors with many other uh, external sources. And you can also generate sample application if you want with several uh, 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 code uh, languages. Next one is the free offering uh, that also mentioned before. So this is my cluster page. This is a completely free offering. So uh, my cluster is basically a, a free cluster which allows uh, anyone with a Microsoft account or a Azure Active Directory a user to create a free Azure Data Explorer cluster uh, without payment at all. And the free cluster is a, a subset of the full uh, ADX offering. It provides the, the core functionality. Uh, you can ingest and analyze up to 100 gigabyte of data uh, completely for free. So if you want to try the product, this uh, free uh, cluster is a, a great uh, option to start with. And uh, now let's switch to the heart of uh, KQL or the heart of ADX, which is basically uh, the query, uh, the queries, it's the, the, the queries capabilities. So I went to the query page. Here you can see that I have several uh, ADX clusters. We will focus on the demo 12 cluster. Uh, each cluster has several uh, databases, okay, and each database has uh, several tables in it. So let's start with this uh, demo 12 cluster with the GitHub database. So as mentioned earlier, I'm going to use the, the KQL language. This is the, the language that you can interact with the ADX service. Uh, KQL is a very uh, powerful language. It's a read-only uh, language. And as mentioned, you start with the name of the table and then use uh, the pipe operator to kind of uh, filter or, or, or flow the data between the different parts of the queries. Uh, now, KQL also offers uh, great free text capabilities that we're going to see in a minute, and also great uh, uh, analytical uh, capabilities. So we have both analytics and uh, free search uh, capabilities, and everything with uh, great performance. So let's start and see some examples. Uh, the first query is just to, to see how many records I have in this table. Okay, so this table is GitHub events table. Basically, we took data from a GitHub interaction or a user, intera user interaction with GitHub uh, website and ingested it to ADX. So this table has uh, about 1.2 uh, billion records. Now let's see how the data actually looks like. So I'm going to use the same uh, table and use the take 10 uh, uh, operator. So as you can see here, uh, this is the actual data. I have some structured data like integers, uh, strings, and I also have more complex data, uh, which is basically a, a, a JSON. So this JSON under the actor field shows you some more uh, data, for example, the display login of the user who interacted with GitHub, the avatar URL, the login uh, ID, etc. So basically in ADX, you can uh, ingest, store, and analyze three types of data. One is the structured data, the integer strings. Second is the semi-structured data like JSON or also arrays, and also free text that uh, I will show you uh, later. Now let's see what I can do uh, with this data set. For example, I want to see uh, how the data uh, spans uh, across the time. So I can use the minimum and maximum uh, operator and then I can see that the data spans uh, between uh, December uh, 2015 to, uh, sorry, yeah, December to February uh, 2019. So we're talking about uh, three uh, years of data. But that's not enough for me. I want to see whether the data uh, is complete. And I want to basically count the number of records or the count of uh, uh, records uh, that were ingested to the data and to create a bucket of one day. 
to make sure that there is data from every day during these three years, and also render a time chart so I can see it visually. So as you can see, as part of the KQL language, uh, we can also easily create visualization, and I can see that the data is pretty complete. Okay, so this is the, the amount of uh, records that were ingested in a beams or buckets of one day. Uh, we can see that there was less activity uh, on GitHub uh, during the holiday seasons, which makes sense. And we can also even see the weekends. And I can also see this tabular view. If I don't want the visualization, it's still here. And just to make sure that uh, uh, you notice, this is the level of performance that you should expect. In this case, it took less than a second to, to generate uh, this uh, visualization and to create this aggregation. So this is not a huge table, but it's it's good enough for the demo. Later, we'll see uh, some uh, bigger table. So here we are talking about a table with about uh, three terabytes uh, of uncompressed data. Uh, once the data is uh, ingested to Azure Data Explorer, we basically also compress the data. So after compression, uh, the data here is uh, basically less than a terabyte. And it's all automatically, okay? So ADX compress the data and also automatically index uh, everything. So before I move moving to more uh, advanced or more interesting uh, samples, let's see again the data. So as shown earlier, let's focus on this actual field, which is basically a JSON. Now the advantage of using a JSON or semi-structured data is that it allows you to uh, to constantly evolve, evolve the, the schema uh, uh, of the data, especially if you're talking about telemetry or things that are changing over time, so you don't want to create a, a very hard a schema. So this is why uh, using JSON as type uh, as data type is uh, extremely useful, especially for uh, big data. Now let's assume that for the next uh, scenario, I want to know how many uh, distinct users interacted uh, with GitHub, or in my case, to count how many uh, distinct display logins uh, we have in this table. So what can I can do here is to extract this field uh, from the uh, JSON. Okay, so in KQL, I can easily use the same the name of the uh, uh, of the of the column. Let me just expand it for a second. The name of the column uh, dot uh, display login. And as you can see, I easily extracted the inner field out of the JSON. And now uh, I can work with this extracted field like any other uh, uh, field that I had. So uh, in this case, I'm going to use the distinct count operator to count the distinct fields in uh, this JSON. And I got that uh, there were 16 million uh, distinct users interacted with this query. So basically here we extracted uh, 1.2 billion JSONs. Okay, it took me about two seconds and uh, I also counted the number of distinct strings. Okay, so this is the kind of interactivity uh, that you can expect uh, using Azure Data Explorer and KQL. Let's see some uh, examples of aggregations. Let's say I want to know how many uh, event types uh, we have in this table. Uh, type is basically the type of the interactivity. So we can see the number of push events, uh, activity with GitHub, create event, watch events, uh, etc. This is another kind of aggregation. And also here, uh, I can create visualizations. So instead of only showing the tabular data, uh, uh, representation of the data, I can create bar chart, a column chart, pie chart, Sorry, pie chart, uh, you name it. And of course, still you can always see the uh, tabular representation of the data. Now I know that we are now in the SQL Beats uh, Summit, but I mentioned KQL. So even if you are a SQL expert, you can use the explain operator of KQL to translate uh, SQL queries to KQL. Uh, so you can use the explain operator, just make sure you add a space uh, about the query. And not only, uh, it's not only about translation, basically Azure Data Explorer can also run a SQL. Okay, so as you can see, I just type uh, a 
it's basically T-SQL and the query works. Uh, I, I must say that, uh, of, of course, it's you can use SQL, but usually once you start trying KQL, uh, uh, users usually quickly discover the advantages of KQL with the visualization, with the best, the better performance, uh, with the free text capabilities and advanced analytics. So you can start with SQL, but also try uh, KQL if you want to give it a try. Later, we'll show you some links. Uh, we also have a, a SQL to KQL cheat sheet, so you can easily use this uh, cheat sheet to understand how to uh, translate the SQL queries that you want to write uh, into KQL. And again, you can do much more with KQL. So let's see some more advanced uh, capabilities that you can do with KQL, and I'm not sure that you can do uh, using SQL. Uh, for example, uh, anomaly detection, which is uh, extremely useful when we talk about uh, big data. So KQL supports out-of-the-box uh, anomaly detection uh, capabilities. You can use these uh, series decompose anomalies to find anomalies or outliers uh, in the data. So let's run this uh, example. And as you can see here, basically uh, I'm counting the number of uh, push events. Okay, I did some filter using also a free text search counting the number of records and use the out-of-the-box KQL function to uh, find anomaly uh, anomalies. And the anomalies are basically uh, these uh, red uh, dots over here. Another example of advanced uh, out-of-the-box capabilities is series uh, uh, decompose forecast. So with KQL, you can also predict, uh, in this case, I'm going to predict the number of push events in my uh, table for the next uh, seven days. Let's run this query. Again, you can see the, the level of performance. Okay, we are again talking about 1.2 billion records. Some of them contains JSON, and uh, this is the kind of uh, performance, as you can see, uh, less than a second. And basically here, the blue line is the actual uh, push events. So you can see that there is a drop because there is no data uh, here. This is the end of my data set. And the uh, orange line is the forecasting that I created using this uh, out-of-the-box uh, KQL function. So this is also the kind of analytical capabilities uh, that you have uh, in KQL. Let's move on to a little bit, uh, uh, to a bigger uh, data set. So earlier we talked about three terabytes of data. Here I am talking about another data set and it has three uh, big tables and this is basically a 40 terabytes of data. Okay, so much more interesting. And this database, uh, this data set is about actual logs that we got from the uh, SQL BI service. Uh, we ingested actual uh, logs and trace activities and let's see how uh, we can use uh, uh, KQL to analyze these kind of logs. So first, we are talking now not about 1.2 billion records. We are going to see a demo with uh, 40 billion lines uh, of records. Let's see how this uh, data set looks like. So again, we have some uh, structured data like dates, uh, strings, and here we also you, uh, we also have the the free text, which is basically the text of the trace. And we're going to see how we can use also the free text capabilities uh, to analyze uh, data using KQL. So to start with, let's see uh, the, the kind of the data. Let's assume that I want to, to dig into the logs and find any uh, anomaly or any problem that uh, uh, we know that we had in the service just for example. So let's start by aggregating the logs based on the uh, level of the uh, uh, of the record or the level of the trace log. So we've already seen it. We can easily aggregate the data. Basically, we're aggregating uh, the data based on the level, and we can see the level of the different logs. And let's focus on level number two, which is a uh, warning uh, traces. Okay. So this is the error of level number two, just took uh, 10 sample records of the logs. Now for the next uh, queries, I want to focus on this role 
role uh, model. Okay? So basically the role means the role of the VM that generated the sample uh, log data. Okay, So as you can see, we have the, the family basically of the machine in, in this example itself. Can you see my, my cursor? I'm not sure. Basically, you can see the role column, which has the gateway uh, role in this example, scale out of a uh, BE role, uh, then we have this underscore, and then there is an index. Now, let's say that I want to see whether there, there was one specific uh, VM family that generated more logs than the other, okay? Now, the data set doesn't have a column for the family of the VM that generated the log, as you, you see here. It has the family and then underscore, okay? So using the uh, free text capabilities of AQL, I can use uh, I can use the parse operator to basically break these strings and throw away everything under the underscore. Okay, so let's see an example. So the first column with the role. This is what I have in my uh, original data set: the the family of the VM underscore and then the index. And using the the parse operator, I can just throw away everything under the underscore and get a new calculated column. Once I have this new calculated column, I can do everything with, with, with this new column. For example, I can count the number of records or of, of uh, trace records based on this new calculated column, which is just the family of the VM. And as you can easily see, the, the family of SPI role, which is basically SharePoint integration role, generated over time much more logs compared to the other VM families, okay? So what we showed here, we, we took a specific text out of the data, manipulated the text. In my case, so I just threw away everything under the underscore and then uh, complete, uh, continued with uh, 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 aggregation as you can do with any out of the box uh, field. Let's see another example. Uh, let's analyze now data for a specific day. Uh, one day in this data set has uh, about uh, 800 million records, and let's see what we can do here. So this is um, uh, an example of how you can really uh, dive into uh, data sets uh, using KQL. So first, you can see that I'm using a let operator, okay? So using the let operator, I can basically break complex KQL queries into sub queries, okay? And like a programming language, you can use let to, to, to define variables and then use these variables later on. So this is one uh, outcome that, uh, uh, or, or one interesting fact that you can see on this query. Second in, is using regular expressions, okay? Earlier, I used the parse operator to easily parse string, but you can also use uh, regex in order to uh, analyze data. And basically, what I'm doing here is to extract the user ID out of the free text. Okay, we have the event text that contains the user ID. So I will uh, extract out of this 800 uh, million uh, records, I will extract the user ID and uh, uh, the client activity ID. Uh, this is an uh, example on how to extract the data. And now I can do uh, something more interesting. Okay, I want to find out of all these user IDs that I took from the free text, the user who suffered the most, okay, or basically the user who got the, the most uh, exceptions uh, based on my data set. Now, this is something that I'm not uh, familiar, or, or I think not many products can achieve in the same level of uh, query capabilities and the same level of performance. Okay, so I'm going again to extract the user ID out, out of the free uh, event text, and I'm also going to join it with the same table in order to count the number of records that this user ID uh, appeared in. Okay, so let's run this query. And as you can see, it took me less than two seconds to 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 get all of these 800 records, to get the user ID out of the free text, and then to join it again with the same 800 records to get this kind of aggregation. And then we can see that this user 
AID basically got 2,000 uh, errors. Okay, so this is the kind of interactivity and the kind of performance uh, that you can uh, expect uh, if you work with Azure Data Explorer. Uh, Guy, Guy, we have 10 minutes left. Uh, I would say let's uh, go with the last example. Okay. Yeah, last, so last let's. Yeah, uh, uh, let's move on to, we have about two more uh, uh, interesting uh, example, examples. Uh, the next one is basically uh, uh, using stocks data. Okay, so I have another table where we ingested several uh, uh, data about uh, stocks and the prices of the stocks. And uh, let's, th this is something easy, like we've already seen, now we can easily create time chart. This is not very interesting, but it's always nice to see. What I want to do here is using another, one of the most advanced operators uh, in uh, KQL, which is the scan operator. Okay. So the scan operator can help me with several uh, things. For example, let's say that I want to find what we call, if you, you, you are uh, dealing with stocks, maybe you have heard about rally. Okay, rally is basically a period of time that the stock price just uh, increased uh, over time. Okay, or day after day, uh, the price uh, of the stock uh, increased. So let's see how we can use KQL capabilities to find these kind of rallies or sequence of days where the uh, stock price uh, increased. We won't go over the entire text, but just to make sure that you understand that we have the, the scan operator. The scan operator can find these kind of sequences. And if I run this query, I can easily see that the Amazon uh, stock in my example has a uh, 10 uh, days of uh, 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 of price increase, okay? 10 sequence uh, uh, days, one after the another of price increase. It's happened between uh, March, Feb uh, March uh, uh, 14 to March 28. So if we go back to the original uh, chart, basically March 14 is somewhere here. So as you can see this line, was detected by the scan operator as a sequence of price increase for 10 uh, days in a row. Yeah, so, so we this don't is encourage another. you to play, yeah. uh, to play with stock a lot. Uh, if, you, if you have to, then Microsoft is probably the way to go. But um, let's, let's switch yeah. back to, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Guy. Uh, let's, let's maybe cover last last thing about demo. I want to just share how you may connect to, from Power BI to Data Explorer. It's, it's quite simple. It's not sophisticated demo, just like Guy presented. Uh, so to get the data from Data Explorer, it's just picking the right connector, nothing more. So um, once you have the Power BI desktop, it's just uh, picking Azure, and there is um, Azure Data Explorer Custo connector. Once you select it, it actually allows you to connect to the, pick the cluster and database. So for example, this report, is actually connected to the cluster and gets pretty much the same data that um, that guy was sharing with you uh, in a second G github events uh, but let me just show you the, the source so it's it's basically not that complex it's just a cluster database and maybe a query it's an optional type so it, it summarizes the uh, events by type in time so i'm presenting a kind of time 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 and time analysis uh, for power bi it's actually in import mode, so it can be blazing fast still with Power BI. Um, moving to small data from big data. Um, now, back to slides, because we want to end up with some uh, summary and maybe maybe also with some uh, questions. Oh, my. Sorry. But that was not the, the right choice uh, here. Yeah. So, hey, um, we've been talking about uh, you know different, different scenarios, different cases. To wrap it up, if you have any kind of those data sources, IoT logs, time-related events, things that are evolving in schema, like JSON, like um, you know, changing, changing structures, if you have to work with uh, Microsoft-based security platforms, KQL and ADX may be something you may consider to learn. So try to remember basic rules. Do not try to memorize that it's, that it's for real-time analytics because it's not really true. You can import stock data from you know, Yahoo and basically play with that as well. It's probably not the best scenario, but hey, time-bound things, that's number one. Immutable data, data it's just appended. Um, high frequency, high volume, you saw terabytes, go ahead. 
uh, semi-structured, structured free, te free text, uh, low latency between the moment you get the data and just end the result of the query. You, you, you saw the performance of all the KQL queries here. And uh, changing business questions pretty often, so digging in the data, that's a great example of when, when this thing can be pretty useful. Now, call to actions. This man on the screen, I know, this man on the screen pre presented you with aka.ms slash adx.links. Please make a photo of the slide and go to this link at the uh, bottom right corner. This is the great, uh, great way to start with Custo. I highlighted one of the links uh, because you don't, you don't even, uh, you don't even have to have to run Azure subscription to start your first ADX cluster and play with it quite extensively. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that was my next step. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question on the screen in a second. Um, so first. Uh, beyond the slide, uh, the, 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 the previous slide, Detective Custo IO, that's the place you want to have fun with. So if you haven't tried this yet, it's still there. You can earn some badges and some respect from the community, as well as visibility for Guy and his team, and my team as well. <laughs> um, so uh, feel free to jump in and become a detective. There are Five, I believe, five, five uh, riddles to solve. They are quite, uh, quite challenging and really, really fancy. Uh, Guy, any plans to uh, to bring it to bring it bring it to life? Probably yes. The yeah, I can agency. also tell a, a, a quick secret that we are going to also launch soon a V2 of the detective agency. So please try the V1 uh, detective.custodio, uh, earn some badges. And later on, you will start with uh, the okay. next Question. challenges. Yeah, so log analytics is used. I mean, guy, do you want do you want to cover this? How this differs? I, I how could this not differ, hear the question. How does differ from log analytics? Okay, great question. So first, Custo or ADX is the underlying technology. Uh, under log analytics, okay? So it's the same technology. Log analytics is basically a SaaS offering, okay? It's a, a, a solution uh, as a software and ADX is PaaS, it's more platform, sorry, platform as a service versus uh, software as a service, okay? So log analytics uh, gives you a more out of the box capabilities like uh, alerts, for example, or out of the box queries that you can easily use, but it's also more expensive, okay? Because log analytics is SaaS offering and Custo is, is fast. Another uh, thing is that Custo lets you easily configure and tweaks several configuration of the service. For example, in Custo you can choose the the SKU or the type of the VM that you are working on. Uh, you can use auto scale to automatically scale in and out. You can stop the cluster if you want. Okay, so if you need more agility uh, or maybe in just your own data set, uh, it's easier to use Custo. If you specifically want to monitor Azure services, okay, or Azure VMs, so you can use Azure Log Analytics with all the built uh, uh, the built in uh, yeah. co connectors and capabilities. Cool. Uh, we have four more questions, so we have to be quite fast. Probably from from the room. Any questions? Not so far. Let's let's take the off the online questions. So, um, well, cheaper data you can run with free cluster, which you can try. Uh, uh, bigger data, yes, you saw terabytes, definitely, but it's different types of data because for you know for dedicated SQL, you keep the history, but you also uh, can do some mergers and uh, basically change some some kind of data, right? And it's not it's not about storing, for example, JSON structures. Typically, you you, do, you you're rather heading towards purely relational data warehouse rather than having some freeform analytics and elastic search, elastic searching for for text, right? Can you have schema validation again, JSON structures in, in, in Custo? Right? 
schema validation. Uh, so do you if, probably yeah. you, if you want to have control over the attributes that come into JSON, it's I would say it's not for the purpose because you want to yeah, play yeah. with with changing structure. We don't bound to the schema. Right. Right, and we have advanced capabilities you can run uh, with the public later called the update policy. So basically you can ingest any kind of JSON and then using update policy, which is like an in inner ETL, you can parse the JSON and see whether this JSON is valid for you or not based on the actual fields. So we have this kind of advanced capabilities, uh, but it's okay. not the main purpose. That has to be enough probably. We, have, we are out of, out of time. So uh, thank you for joining us at this session. I hope you'll find it. Uh, interesting. Give some thumbs up and and uh, claps for uh, for Guy. Thank you very much.